We are here at the HitFix offices with Nicole Bahari and Tom Hello. Meissen of Sleepy Hollow. So, guys, first off, congratulations on the Television Critics Association nomination for a new series. Um, Thanks very much. When you guys started on this, did you think it was going to be a show that critics were going to respond to? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. That's a, that's a very interesting question because people always ask, did you think it would be so successful? But no one ever really asks about the critics. And I think that was a really big surprise that so many of them are just so generous <laughs> and really love it. I think because it's, you know, it's refreshing and it's, yeah, it's, different. it's different, especially for a network show. Well, did you guys figure it was going to be sort of the show that was going to have like a really sort of small cult following that was going to be really passionate, but maybe not sort of the mainstream success that it has been? Yeah, I think we have a bit of that. We have sort of a bit of both. We have a very strong cult following of people that like are adamant about every twist and turn in the story. And then I think the grasp of like you know, families that like, I, I keep hearing people saying that like their families watch the show every Monday and, and that like girlfriends get together and watch the show. That I wasn't expecting by a long shot, <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know? But um, I think that we do give a little bit of something to everybody. So, you know, we think about that now um, when we're, you know, um, at least I do when I'm acting, I like to think about the fact that like, it's not just the techies and the Comic-Con people, it's like a little bit of everybody. So make sure to like fill in all those colors and give everyone their due in a way in the storytelling. And I feel like we're starting to really uh, um, acknowledge that and embrace that. But you're only a month away from seeing the Comic-Con people again, so. Yeah. I can't wait, I can't wait. Do you have any sense of what that's gonna be like? Because you guys went last year, obviously, and no one knew. People saw the show and maybe got to experience it a little bit, but now... Yeah, because we, we premiered the, the pilot at Comic-Con. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was the first time anyone had seen it, and that's the best audience to, to premiere something to, because uh, if they like it, they're gonna let you know, and if they don't, they're gonna let you know. Yeah, <laughs> uh, very that, honest. That was cool. That was a, a highlight of my career so far, I think, oh. Comic-Con. Was it highlight of your career too? I enjoyed myself. Um, <laughs> uh, no, actually, we just did uh, the ladies of Sleepy Hollow. Just went to the Comic Con in where were we? In well, Birmingham, in weren't you? Birmingham, yes, in the UK. And there was a lot of love. I was really surprised. There was a lot of love, and um, people followed every moment of the show. And just you know, I, I for some reason it didn't click to me that we were doing well overseas as well. So that was a big a big gift. Well, do you have a different perspective on the overseas popularity coming from, as you do, over the seas? <laughs> <laughs> I'd, um, when I first met Len Wiseman for, the, um, uh, for my screen test, we actually discussed the, the idea they had of making Ichabod English. I said, actually, a lot of the stuff in here, the show as a whole, it's a very English humor because mm. it's so tongue-in-cheek. Um, it's... You know, as as we often say, that the show gets the joke, and that's that's quite English. <laughs> now, my reaction to the pilot was, "This is crazy and fun. What are the chances that they can keep the crazy up for thirteen episodes?" Did you guys have that worry after the pilot? You mean, would it be cancelled after four episodes? Oh, no, no, no. I just meant. Well, would we come up with inventive things? Exactly. To do? Would the second episode just be uh, Abby and Ichabod sitting in the police precinct, going, "Okay, well, we didn't have enough budget to do anything exciting this episode, so." Never mind. <laughs> Not with these people. <laughs> no way. No, no. The, the, the group of writers are too far too inventive. Yes. I think they... they Passionate and mischievous. Yes, quite. The idea of sitting and going through, to turning it into a procedural, mm -mm. I think that, that would be hellish for, for them <laughs> and for us and probably for everyone watching. And as we see the different drafts come in, you can almost see them having to downsize a little bit from the grand idea, <laughs> you know? So I don't think it's gonna stop coming by any, by any stretch of the imagination. Now I have some episodes where I stop being able to follow what's happening with the grand mythology. <laughs> oh and man. I just, and I just sort of- He's the first person to tell the truth on that one, <laughs> by the way. And I just sort of listen to the character's banter and have fun with that, and that's enough for me to enjoy the episode. That's awesome. How often do you guys find that you're right on the ball with what's happening with the mythology, and how often do you just go, okay, that's happening? <laughs> 
Well, we kind of have to know it because we're like telling that part of the story. Um, but we do get, I think, scripts sometimes, and we're like, where is this going? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> where is this going? But then in the end, it, it, it it's, it's like in the finale. It um, it all ties up in the end in a way that I think is really. Uh, surprising, like uh, having uh, Henry Parrish be Ichabod Crane's son. Initially, you're like, who is this guy? Why is he here? What is mm. he talking about? Eating sins. What is that about? You know? So it feels like it's not going anywhere, and then it ends up being like the big grand kick, you know? I sometimes confuse demon names. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I have to remind myself when we start which shooting demon? a scene which demon is this? Do, do you get corrected in embarrassing ways? Do the oh, no, I, I find it in the end. I, okay. I just go and ask Nicole. <laughs> so you never get confused on the demon I, names? Well, I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm sort of the, the anal one, I guess. So, no. Plus, all that stuff freaks me out a little bit. <laughs> Even though I do the show, occasionally I'm weirded out by the incantations and the demons. I'm like, what are we, what are we actually doing? Are we actually summoning demons, Tom? Probably. <laughs> what did you find strangest, weirdest, freakiest, most disturbing? Mm. You know what? This is a different answer than, because someone's asked me that question, and I was like, yeah, it was like incantations. But actually, <laughs> I just thought about the second episode, season one, uh, this, the, the this. Witch. No. Oh, the Sandman. The Sandman, when the woman jumped out of the, when she jumped out of the, um, the window, that was really dark. Like, we have some dark moments on the show, but I saw that again recently and was like, oh, yowie. And I remember being like, I was hooked to a harness and I was like hanging out the window. That was a really rough night, like, <laughs> watching the body fall and everything. So. Yeah, because actually that episode started with two or three people killing themselves. Yeah, yeah, people were killing themselves. And I thought, wow, we're going really dark really early. <laughs> and then her eyeball exploded and sand came out. Yeah. As it does. Obviously. <laughs> As it does. I thought the Gollum episode, Wasn't I thought that was... Wasn't where you were like choking on the sand? Oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh no. There was, there was a, a, a scene where a, a, the Sandman does something... It was written. ...terrific, and sand starts pouring endlessly out of my mouth, and I'm choking on the sand. He's a terrific actor. So I'm doing choking on sand acting. <laughs> Coffee and, then, and everything. And then they didn't add the sand in. So I watched it at the end, and it was just me going, <laughs> with no sand. And but no one noticed. Everyone no one enjoyed noticed. it. There was meant to be a, very, a really terrific special effect there, and instead it was some um, maybe not so terrific acting. Did you inquire what happened to the sand? Did you ask anyone, or? No, I should probably go and ask an accountant somewhere. <laughs> For breaking entertainment news and more, follow at HitPix on Twitter or visit HitPix.com.